Hello and welcome back to the Shardbreaker podcast. I am Midnight, the host, and I'm here with Mythic. Hello. And Dickness. Hello. And we read chapters 47 through 56 this week. Um, oh, wait, we're going to 57? Oh, no. <laughs> you say this every week, Mythic. <laughs> I know. I do. I don't have any new material, all right? You, you, know, you need to... Fun. I feel like I feel like it'll happen at some point. <laughs> it's and then... actually gonna happen. No one's gonna believe it. Yeah. yeah. No, exactly. <laughs> Hell, you guys don't know. It might have already happened. <laughs> Maybe I already finished the whole book. Oh gosh. I did have a five hour drive. <laughs> you did have a five hour drive. You probably could have uh, read listened to the whole book basically. <laughs> yep, pretty much. Uh... two times speed. <laughs> Is it like a ten hour audiobook or something? No. Okay. It's a little longer than that. <laughs> So I think I have six hours left on it, so... Oh, okay. Uh, but yeah, so we are... The last few chapters, we're kind of getting into the, the Sander Lanch. I'm sure you guys are very, very excited for the final few chapters next week. I say There's, few, it's like another uh, yeah, eight or I, something. I, I'm happy for this book to be over, for sure. No! <laughs> well, even even, even these last few chapters, you're, you're not, like, starting to really get into it. It's, it's getting good, dude. I, I mean, I called most of the things, like, I, I feel like there's like one thing on you podcast, didn't not on podcast, but before, before it got to the point, I was like, "That's this man's a little more fishier than I thought he was." But <laughs> yeah, we'll that, get there. Yeah, I didn't expect it to come up so quickly. But. <laughs> um, but yeah, so we're starting with uh, chapter forty-seven with Serenity's point of view. Uh, she uh, is just leaving Elantris. Uh, with her Rathen and the city guards. Um, she wishes she could stay with Spirit, but she knows he was right that she couldn't have stayed. Uh, her Rathen then places a hand on her shoulder, and she glances upwards as he says, Jadith preserved her. He tells her that because of her, t- because of her, Teod has given in to Shudarath, and that she should talk to her father if she doesn't believe him. He also says she should convert, and she says she'd rather die and backs away from him. Mm-hmm. Uh... <laughs> And suddenly, Iandel and Kin are there, Iandel pointing his sword to Harathan's neck, and Kin hugging Serenade tightly. Uh, Harathan then bends, <laughs> like, he basically, like, Matrix bends backwards. He then kicks the sword uh-huh. out of Iandel's hand, catches it in the air, and points it into the ground before letting the hilt fall into Iandel's hand. Which, fucking badass, in my opinion. <laughs> yeah, that man, that man, that man's showing some real prowess there. <laughs> so, yeah, what, what, what like... did you think of Harathan so easily getting Iandel's sword from him like that? Uh, well, man wasn't holding his grip tight enough. What do you think of that little that little display Harathan did there, Darkness? I don't know. It it kind of made me not like him even more. Really? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I always found that part like super bad. I was like, oh damn. Okay, you're just gonna like matrix your way out of this situation. Wait, you, you're saying you don't like Harathan? I don't think I ever did. To be honest. Well, yeah, but I'm saying that's that's who you're talking about. You're not talking about the guy who literally just. Kind of holding his sword very flimsily enough to for it to be knocked out of his hand. Yeah. No, I'm talking about Harathan. Okay, I mean, I think Harathan was pretty cool in that scenario, but I, <laughs> I don't do. Know. He definitely, he definitely sounds, he definitely seems like a little baby later. So, oh, gosh. Uh, so before Harathan uh, leaves, he leans in close to Serene and whispers that time moves like a mountain, but it will crush those that don't move before it. Uh, any any thoughts on his little message to Serene before he walks away? She's gonna die. It's foreshadowing. Darkness. Any thoughts? No. Okay. I literally like I tried putting sense into it, but I doubt it's gonna. I don't know. Maybe she is. Maybe it is like a hint towards her death. Mm. Uh, so Kin then says they should take Serene back to his home, and Serene states there is no time for that. She said she had a vacation in Elantris, and perhaps she can escape back to it once her work is done. Uh, she then states she needs to speak to Royal and Alhan immediately, leaving King, Kin looking dumbfounded and Iandel smiling. Uh, so once back at Kin's place, Serene is devouring food dishes. <laughs> Which, goddamn. <laughs> so... Royal arrives and also collapses when he sees her before seating himself down. Royal and Luke will joke a bit about her appetite, but Serenity is too busy eating to properly respond. I think that she eats like four or five plates of food. Mm-hmm. Yep, and he says she's got the family appetite for sure. Yep. Uh, so while Serenity is eating, Luke and Kin note that Elantrians like to eat but don't actually need to, which uh, Serenity kind of notes in her mind that like, oh, they, they seem to know a lot about Elantrians. Interesting. Uh, and Serenity then notes that she was likely in Elantris for the exact same amount of time as Harathan was. 
Royal then asks if Serene has spoken to her father, and she says she will soon. And she, I think she kind of like says it like she has like dread in her stomach or something. She says, "Yeah, because Harathan told her basically, I, I manipulated your own father." Yeah. And Iandel then returns with Shudin, who gives a wide smile, uh, and he also has a shoulder shoulder length blonde wig. Uh, it's then also explained that all of Serene's things would have been burned due to Erlish custom, which, goddamn, she wasn't even gone a week and you burned all her shit. That sucks. Yep. Um, but yeah, were you, were you glad to kind of see her back with all her noble friends? They were all super happy to see her and smiling and but, like it was just a nice. For the most part, yeah. But like, she left Rodin, so. She did leave Rowden, but she she, she, she knew it was Rowden yet. Hmm? She doesn't know it's Rowden yet. Though. She does not know it's Rowden yet. No. <laughs> I thought she would. Like I figured, like this next chapter was going to be her being like, "That man's very suspicious. I wonder if he's this person." <laughs> nope. <laughs> um. Which we'll get to later, but I think she kind of like beats herself up about like, oh, I fucking should have known. <laughs> yep, she should have. Yeah, she's like, I'm so stupid. <laughs> I didn't realize this. But anyway, I think, so I think honestly, I feel like that's probably the one part in this entire book that I've liked so far. Is that scene? <laughs> so, um, so like that, also... that whole that whole scene, not just that part. <laughs> mm. uh, so we also learned that Ahan is at the palace trying to see what Tellery is up to. Uh, the men say there's nothing they can do to stop Tellery, but Serene says they must take action to do anything they can to keep Warren from being able to take hold of Aralon. She states that she thinks Tellery would be worse than Iodon, and the men eventually say they need to sleep on it, which Serene agrees to. As the men are leaving, Royal says to Serene that there seems to be no reason to continue their betrothal. Serene agrees and silently notes that she's now had three betrothals and no actual marriages. She then asks Kin if she can stay with them, and he says that his wife would be upset if she went anywhere else, because she's already like made up a bed and everything for her. Uh, so do you think for Serene will finally get married by the end of the book, or do you think she's going to stay unmarried? I think she's going to die before she gets married. Yeah, I don't think she's getting married. All the betrothals and no marriage, unfortunately. I feel like she's... Oh, okay, no. She's I have, I, I have a different theory, but I still think mm -hmm. she's going to die before being married. Yeah. I see. Mm -hmm. I think we have the same theory. Yeah, I think we do too. <laughs> oh, gosh. Oh, we'll get to that, I guess. I'm assuming later we'll get to that. Oh, yeah. Or... Oh, All right. yeah. Uh, so we then skip to that night as Serene had just fish finished speaking to her father via Ash. She had learned that Harathan wasn't lying to her and that as soon as he was done with Ergalon, he, was, uh, he would be going to do a ceremony for her father for a proper conversion. Apparently her father intended to keep to his word even if Harathan had been the one to cause Serene to go to Elantris in the first place. That part right there triggered the fuck out of me. Like, <laughs> I, I know. I'm just like, really? Really, dude? Like, I get it, but also I'm like, fuck. Okay, but like you got manipulated, like as fuck. Like you be like even like your daughter was used against you, and you're still gonna go like and do what that motherfucker wanted. To yeah, do well, to, like... my next my next little note here is kind of part of his reasoning as well. Is Serene notes that even though Eventio said it wasn't just about her, but also because he knew his navy couldn't keep back for Fjord, uh, Fjordal if they truly tried to push in. Uh, however, she still feels like it's she's at fault. So like his, part of his thing was like, look, if they're potentially taking over Erlon, like we literally have zero chance. And I'm doing what's best for my people, even though it was also like, yes, I want you back. I, I do feel like I can understand they're a tiny country with, like, very little military. Like, I can kind of understand being just like, we, we don't really well, have much choice. <laughs> well, then maybe be a better king. Mm. Wow. <laughs> I mean, he's better than Iodon. He's sure. much better than Iodon. Or Tellery. <laughs> what do you mean? I don't know. I don't know. I, I think Tellery had, had the right idea. <laughs> He was a pretty smart king. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, you know, cowardly, but he's smart. Uh, so Aventu had also told her to have Erlon convert as well, but she refused and knew he was proud of her for doing so. But yeah, uh, my question here, I think we kind of all, at least Darkness definitely partially answered already, is are you disappointed in him for keeping his word and for giving up on fighting against Shudareth? No, not at all. I think a man is only as much as his word, so. I'm dumping him with the rest of the fathers. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Damn. Okay. Uh, so then, chapter 48, we move to Harathan's point of view, as he sits in the palace on a stone ledge that he had pushed a mound of pillows off of. Uh, many others were waiting in the same room to speak to the new king, but Harathan was annoyed that he was being grouped with them. Uh, Wern, through him, had, through him, had funded Tellery's uh, place on the throne, so he felt he should have been given more importance. Uh, and finally, Harathan is called to the room that used to be Iodon's study. There's heaps of cloth and exotic foods in the room uh, for Tellery. I think he's even sitting on like a, just like a pile of pillows and like blankets. And 
uh, Harethan asks to speak to him alone, and Tellery has his attendants uh, leave them. Harethan then brings up Tellery's promise of their allegiance, and Tellery plays dumb as Harethan had expected. Uh, my first little question before moving on into that was, what do you think about Tellery's uh, upgrades to the palace? We have all the luxurious items. Um, you had it right. <laughs> I kind of, I don't know, it's just satisfying because I know what happens. <laughs> so. <laughs> so no other thoughts because you're just like, yes. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Alright. Uh, so Harathan says he can replace Tellery like he did I like Iodon was replaced, but Tellery calls him out on the fact that technically Serene did all of that. He he didn't actually <laughs> dethrone Iodon in any way. <laughs> um and Tellery well, then said hmm? He is right, because even though it's like, you know, the like uh trying to get rid of all his like, you know, power like mer like merchant power, you know, like economy wise, like they fucking failed, like the priests. Yeah, <laughs> uh, it's very possible that uh, Idon would have been able to keep the throne if uh, Serene hadn't discovered that he was uh, sacrificing people while naked. <laughs> yeah. So you just, you just had to add the naked part, didn't you? It's it's just oh horrific. I just I feel like I would just be traumatized for life if I went in on that. I mean, I mean, I mean, after as I was listening to this on the drive home, drive home, uh, I was thinking, man. Serenity so sounds a lot like Midnight. <laughs> like, description-wise. Description-wise? Yeah, yeah, like, when they're... Just, just the way, the way, aside from the fact that she's six feet tall. Uh, <laughs> and has but... blonde hair. <laughs> uh, there is, where were we? <laughs> we got into a weird discussion about my appearance. Well, yeah, no, because you said that you would be like Serenity seeing that you were... Uh, oh, I said, I said, if I was in Serenity's position, I would have been traumatized yeah. forever. You were likening yourself to Serenity, so mm. I feel like you'd be more likely to be the sacrifice. <laughs> Honestly, yeah, probably. Um, <laughs> great. Um, so where was I? Um, but yeah. Uh, Harathan says that he can. Yeah. Uh, technically, Serenity did that. Tellery says that uh, there will be a price for him to convert, which Harathan was expecting, but says that Harathan cannot afford to pay it. Tellery then drops that he wants to be a Gjorn, and that he has sent a letter personally to Wern. Harathan is froze frozen, realizing the severity of what Tellery has done. He calls Tellery a foolish man, and Tellery tells him to leave, which Harathan does. So, I mean, we kind of know what Wern's response is later, but what were you expecting uh, when you first read that part? For Wern's response pretty much, to be... Pretty much exactly what happened. <laughs> Just pissed off and like, no. Pretty much. <laughs> I mean, granted, I did also later think that, like, somebody who came disguised was, like, a messenger or something, but... I thought the city would have burned. <laughs> Honestly. And, hey, we don't know. It might still burn. I hope so. <laughs> uh, so we then get to chapter 49. We get a new Aeon, Aeon Omi, meaning love. Uh, and we have Rowden's point of view. Uh, he notes that at first he had avoided the library because it reminded him of Serene, and then he went back to it specifically for the same reason. Uh, and he focuses on the connection between aeons and the land. He recognizes some of the different lines and dots on the aeons as forests or rivers, but he doesn't understand others, such I think there's like a, a little X on one of the aeons, and he's like, I don't fucking know what the hell that could be. <laughs> he's like, I have no clue what this means. Um, Rowan also finds that the door attacks him at least twice a day now. He also finds that he feels more tired after each attack. After five days, Rowden finds himself frustrated, staring at a map of Erlon. He had started working on more complex Aeon drawings with variants in the width of the lines by using different fingers and also using sticks or quills. Uh, Galadon then enters the library wearing new shoes from Maresh with leather soles reinforced with iron nails. He says that Ash mentioned that Serene had convinced the nobles to rebel against Tauri and that they'd be getting another supply dump that night. Uh, so... What do you think Serenity has been sending to the Elantrians? Do you have any, like, things specific or just, like, the same kind of stuff she has been before? Um, she's asking this question for a reason. Yeah. No. Always. She always is. asks things, questions for a reason. Mm -mm. Sometimes I also just ask questions because I feel like I'm talking for too long by myself and I'm like, what the fuck can I ask here? <laughs> <laughs> That's a lie. It's definitely not a lie. Sometimes I'll, be, like, go no. down, like, five paragraphs of my notes and I'm like, I need an extra question in here. What do I <laughs> You unprepared? Never. It's not that I'm unprepared. It's just like I don't feel like I should be speaking for like ten minutes by myself before asking questions. I think you should always be speaking no. for ten minutes. We need to get you speaking more. Yes. God. 
Anyways, are you guys going to answer my question? I what was your question? <laughs> what do you think Serena is sending to the Elantrians? Do you think it's just the same stuff as before, or do you think she's sending something specific? She's sending people. It's human, human contraband. Mm. Interesting. No, I'm joking. But, like, I, I feel like this is the same thing. Especially but, food, but, you know. Like, <sighs> you're asking it for a reason, though. Yeah, that's not like fuck. It's like yeah. there's something don't there that we're not gonna be able to say because we don't really realize it. But I mean, unless I read the rest of this book, you know. Do you cut out my tip? What? Can you not hear me? I, I heard it. You know, I, it did sound like you. It sounded like your word cut off at the end there. Maybe you just said like a noise gate that cut out the last little like syllable. So unless uh, unless I read the rest of the book, you know. Yeah. Okay. So I, I did catch everything. I don't know. It just it just cut off okay. right in Discord. It sounded it sounded like you got cut off there to me. I'm sorry. I don't know. I think she just wants to hear your voice again. Oh my god. I do too. Yeah. Anyways, uh, Galdon then asks if he had figured out anything new with Aeon Door, which Rowden replies no. Galdon then suggests that something new might need to be added if nothing has changed, which Ra which causes Rowden to realize that the Chasm is a new feature in the landscape. He says that maybe the Chasm caused the Riode, not the other the way what? around. The, the what? Chasm. <laughs> Chasm. It's not a chasm. What? What? Every time. What? Do I want to go to Google and like figure out how to actually say that word? Look, every time he gets, every time he gets brought up, you say that way. It's like, yeah. I'm it's pretty like sure other people grade. pronounce it that way. I don't mm. think so. Chasm. <laughs> voice <laughs> just trying to find the voice that says it like her uh-huh yep i know she chasm. is chasm she's gonna be so disappointed she's looking, she's looking for the canadian one <laughs> <laughs> but yes the chasm <laughs> fuck you all anyway <laughs> where the fuck was i uh we were talking about the the chasm so he says that maybe the the chasm caused the Rio, not the other way around. Radon adds a line to his current Aeon, which fails, but he tries it again, and this time it works. He feels the door burst through him and free, feeling joyful somehow. Radon somehow knows that he will no longer be struck by the painful waves. So I kind of tried to hint at it throughout, uh, like putting emphasis on like, oh, something in the landscape, what happened? <laughs> Uh, so did you expect that the chasm to be the issue with the Aeons when it was revealed that the Aeons represent the land of Erelon? Mm. Did you guys ever catch on to no. that? I, 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 didn't, I didn't put two and two together, no. I didn't, but as soon as they said the chasm, I was like, fuck. I should have thought of that. Because <laughs> I completely put it in the back of my mind like it wasn't even there. <laughs> yeah, so the, the chasm was the issue all along. I'm, I'm they, glad they the said Aeon chasm over. and not chasm. But... I mean, chasm, the, the chasm is a problem all the time, so. Anyways. The bigger the chasm, the worse it is. <sighs> the Aeon he had drawn then glowed brightly before bending around itself until it formed a disc and became a vortex of fire before shooting out at a bookshelf. All that's left is a pile of charcoal, and Rowden says he thinks he burned the biology section. Um, They spend the next hour... They didn't need that. I, <laughs> it's not about Aeons, who cares? <laughs> I got so upset when he said that. Because I was right. like, no, not biology. Not the biology fuck, fuck biology. Oh, no. But, but it can be so useful, though. Actually, it might have been useful for some uh, healing Aeons. That's what I'm saying! <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe they shouldn't have got rid of the biology section. Like, I was like, well, as soon as he said that, I was like, what if the fucking answer is right there? <laughs> <laughs> he just fucked it up. Uh, so they spend the next hour cleaning, and then Rowden suggests trying another Aeon, this time Aeon Ash, since it's much less dangerous. Uh, he's able to get the Aeon working, but notes that it seems much less powerful than it should be. He tries a more powerful Aeon Ash, and it's barely stronger than the previous one. Galdon then asks Rowden to use a healing Aeon on him, which Rowden tries with no results. Galdon feels frustrated, but Rowden does his best to cheer him up. Rowden and Galdon continue to experiment, and Rowden determines that the Aeons are definitely not as powerful as they should be, and that any Aeons targeting them specifically do not work. So, uh, are you disappointed that the Aeons won't target at them, and what else do you think needs to happen to fix Aeon Door completely? So, I wasn't surprised that it didn't work, because I knew it wasn't going to be that easy. Mm -hmm. I tried, like, as soon as I knew that it wasn't working on them, I tried figuring out, like, and, like, the fact that it just, like, didn't transform them or anything in general. I, I, I was, like, trying to go through all the things and i was like 
uh, that could possibly like keep the what is it, Aeon door from working properly. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was like, maybe it's like another like landscape thing, you know. Mm-hmm. So I'm just. No, I don't think it's a landscape thing. What do you think, Ozemethic? I, I think it's more of like I'm trying to think of how to explain it. Uh, like but he needs more incentive. Like something major has to happen. I don't think he's putting enough into it. Like a trigger moment. Yeah, something something specific. Like you know, somebody die vast, awesome. vastly Someone more open. vastly not... more important than yourself being <laughs> harmed. Um, mm. Well, that's I mean that's what I thought at first, like the landscape thing, and then uh, a little bit further down they go into like um, fuck what was it? Uh, they go into oh it, they go into how it seems like he's like like exhausted his limit. And that's why it seems weaker, right? Well, no, he, it's like, not his limit. He thinks that, like, from the time the the Riode till now, that uh, it, the door's been, like, building up trying to get out. Because every time he's used it, it's been, like, trying to escape but can't. And so he thinks that pressure built up and then released. And now the door is, like, not as, like, built up. So maybe if you, like, yeah. waited another 10 years, it would do just as strong of a an Aeon, even in its current mm-hmm. state. Hmm. Um, yeah, well... I, I just I figured it was something like a like it needs to recharge. Um, I just wanted to ask a question again about Mythic's theory. Uh, so were you saying like they need to use like a different Aeon instead of a healing Aeon, or do you mean like they have to use something on like something other than them, or like I wasn't I was just trying to get clarification on well, your theory? Because I, I mean, because later on we figure out that like you know it doesn't even like it just doesn't seem to have enough power, and like when he stated that uh, he, that like maybe it was like you know like a dam where all of the power was kind of being stifled and stopped. And then when he finally did activate it, it just, you know, sprang forward. Maybe he has to kind of almost initiate that same effect and mm. like kind of give more power to it. Like it needs more power. Like, um, and I think a very like specific event happening, like, you know, either him almost dying or maybe, Serene almost dying or like you know something very impactful mm. has to happen for him to be like you know releases it all like the door just kind of pushes through him all of a sudden the door opens <laughs> yeah the door opens yeah i see i see <clears throat> i don't think i think it's just that he's not as experienced with it at the moment yeah i mean he, he may be really really good at it but yeah he's obviously not very experienced he's been there for like two months so uh, so Radon then concludes that the Aeons won't be able to affect them while they are still stuck frozen in the process of becoming an Elantrian. He also concludes that likely the reason the first Aeon he had drawn had been so powerful was because it had drained the buildup of door that had been pressing to come out, like a gas buildup. Uh, he then has an idea and rushes over to a book before drawing a complicated Aeon. Once it's completed, Galadon thinks Radon has been healed, however Radon tells him it's an illusion stuck to his shirt. Galadon asks what good it is, and Radon says it'll get them out of Elantris. Which we we know about that later. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, we then go to back to Sereni's point of view, chapter fifty. Uh, as Ash comes to her, Ash apparently couldn't find spirit, so he had gone and spoken to Galadin, which Galadin had mentioned to Rowden just in the previous chapter, uh, before going to check on the new king. Ash says that King Tellery had been lounging around the palace, saying that there weren't enough young women around. Which I wonder where all the young women went. <laughs> hmm. They definitely weren't sacrificed by the previous king. What is? No, not at all. <laughs> what if Aeondor just needs sacrifices? <laughs> Iodon was actually somehow the one responsible for that buildup. Yeah. Where was I? Uh, but yeah, so it's also mentioned that apparently Tauri's brother did most of the work, gaining their money, and Tauri inherited upon his brother's death. Uh, are you surprised that Tauri never really worked for his money? He just inherited it. Nah, he seems the type. Right. <laughs> what do you think, Mythic? It's like you, Midnight. Huh? Just wow. Like I fucking worked for my money, dude. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. I, think she was just giving, I think she was just giving it, just like... Yeah. No. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, was, I was not surprised, though. No. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't think I would be surprised. Tell her he's pretty... Uh... <laughs> he's, he's pretty lazy. <laughs> Uh, so that conversation then moves on to Harathan, who apparently has been visiting the palace daily. Uh, however, Tellery has yet to properly convert to Shudareth. 
Rathen has also apparently put out a bill stating that Erlon must convert to Shudareth or face incarceration. So Renny expects that if this uh, gets put through and Erlon becomes Durethi, she and uh, the nobles with her will probably be put in prison. Um, so Renny then arrives at Royal's mansion, where the women's fencing classes were continuing. She is greeted by the women as she leaves her carriage, but notes that she still isn't part of their group, and that the mm -hmm. only group she ha has truly felt a part of was the group of Elantrians she had stayed with. As she practices her fencing, she thinks about Elantris, Domi, her feelings, and the ironies of life. Uh, so were, you, were you surprised or happy that the women were insistent on continuing their fencing practices? I know Darkness I, liked that, <laughs> probably. I was actually, yeah, I was actually surprised that they continued it. I, I really wasn't, because I'm pretty sure, like, I felt like they had a, like, Serena had a big impact on them. Mm -hmm. But I know, like, you'd been saying, I think, I don't know if it was last episode or two episodes or something ago, but you were like, the fencing has to come back, it has to mean something, so I was like, Darkness yeah. is going to be happy that it gets mentioned again after so many chapters. Uh, <laughs> I mean, uh, I still think they're going to lead a revolution. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so Serenity then notices the other women have gotten distracted by something. She goes over and sees a Dooladin aristocrat and his servant. Ash comes over to her and explains the man's name is Kalu, and had a, he had escaped during the revolution and been hiding in southern Erlon. Apparently he had come to Kay after hearing that Aidan was looking for someone to take over Eden's lands. Uh, Kalu then compliments Sereni and makes her blush, which she does not like. Apparently she doesn't like men that can make her blush easily. Uh, he then goes on about how he had tried to go to the palace, but had been told he would have to wait a week to speak to the king, so he had came here as he had heard about royal. Royal then shows up, and he and Kalu speak to each other, while Serenity whispers to Ash that she doesn't like the doula. She tells Ash she thinks he's false because he doesn't have an accent, but then realizes after that it's more that he's too stereotypical of a doula. Uh, so, considering what we know about Kalu later, did you realize during this chapter, before the, uh, later, that who Kalu was? I, yeah. thought he was? I thought he was the person coming from uh, wherever uh, that Talry was calling. Yeah. But Darkness, you figured it no. out? Yeah, no, I, I I had two options, right? Mm. So it's either can I just say it? Sure. Yeah, I thought it was either Rowden or um. Oh, Galadon. Think, yeah, there you go. I was blanking on how to say his name. Galadon, yeah. Yeah, I thought it was either of them too. Mm. Yeah, because I was yeah I was wondering just if you guys would catch that because like Rowden's like oh because of this illusion I know how know how to get out of Elantris and then it's like mm -hmm. oh there's this random new person showing up. Yep. <laughs> Right where Serene is, <laughs> like royal and stuff. Um, so Serene eventually interrupts Kalu uh, and suggests he joins them in fencing, uh, and he had a quick, uh, and that he have a quick, quick bout with her. She notices Kalu break character for a brief moment as Serene compliments how good the doula are at fencing, uh, and she gets out the sharpened swords instead of the dull ones, uh, and is surprised though when Kalu agrees because she's like, "This guy's not a real doula and aristocrat. He's gonna back down and be embarrassed." But no, he he agrees. Uh, and so they begin fighting, and Serenity notes that Kalu is spending way too much of his time parrying her attacks instead of attacking her back. And if he was truly an aristocrat, he'd be one of the poorer fencers of them. They go back all the way to the fountain, and Kalu jumps in, splashing Serenity with water uh, to kind of like blind her partially. And Serenity feels her sword hit something soft and hears Kalu let out a small yelp of pain. But which, and uh, this and is it, when I figured out it was Serenity. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and when she goes to attack again, she sees Kalu has put his sword into the ground and is holding a flower for her. Uh, did you like their little fight there? Uh, I was kind of hoping she was going to, like, you know, actually hurt him, but... I mean, she kind of does. <laughs> I know, but, like, actually, like, you know, like, cut off an arm or something. That'd be pretty fucked up. Yeah. That'd be funny as fuck. Yeah. It's like, what is she going to do when she sees, like, he's not, not who he really is? <laughs> You see a arm fall off, no blood. Yeah. <laughs> he's just standing there, he's like, oh shit. Well, no, actually, you probably I feel become like... a hoe edge instantly. Well, I, I, I wonder though. I wonder if you, if you did cut off an arm though, would the illusion still show as another like that there's an arm there, and you would just have another arm sitting on the ground? That's a good question. <laughs> huh. That's a very good question. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> he still has multiple arms. They're like, why? Why is there an arm on the ground and an arm here floating? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so Serenity then searches for a scratch on the doula from her blade, but sees none, and also sees no blood on her blade. Uh, so as the women take the doula away, he glances over his shoulder at her and gives her a knowing sly smile that Serenity, for some reason, finds familiar. Yeah, she still didn't put it together. Nope. <laughs> uh, then we go to chapter 51, 
which I really like chapter 51. Some of these Harathan chapters, I'm just, I really love. <laughs> oh. They're like short and nice and interesting in my opinion. Uh, maybe that's just because I know what happens though. I don't know. <laughs> oh? I don't know. Well, because I, I obviously know what the hell's going on and what the left is referring yeah, to. Yeah, because yeah, you are... You'll find out. You could you can read right after this is over. Uh-huh. Yeah, you're evil. Uh, but anyway, so we then go to Harathan as he tours the market, mostly filled with merchants from the east, as they had spent a lot of time and money shipping their wares here and couldn't afford to not make a profit, even with the upheaval of the king dying. Harathan notes that when they, he had uh, when he had gotten to his seon to call Wern, Telri's letter had already reached him. Harathan was grateful that Wern was only slightly angry and had indicated he had little patience for fools. He continued to try to meet with Telri, but the man still hadn't converted. Uh, were you expecting Wern's response disappointed in it? Was I expecting what? Wern's, that, that to be Wern's response to the whole thing. Oh, no. As I said, I expected I expected the city to burn. So yeah. also considering we know that in like what a couple chapters or something, Tellery dies. Do you think that Wharton said that, but then he still would have done something if Tellery didn't just like die like the next day or whatever? Because he might have just said that and then like, oh, I'm still gonna do something. Like, do you think something else would have happened if Tellery hadn't died? I, I'm starting to feel like Wharton has a lot less power than we think he does. Yeah. Mm. I don't know, they just don't seem like a very I'm doing this sort of person. You think maybe some of the other nobles and like her father maybe was a little right about them being like maybe a bit less of a threat than Serene seems to think? Possibly. Not less not 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 uh, It's not the fact that they're less of a threat, it's the fact that like I feel like Okay, so I feel like the priests going around and like for example, Rathen, mm. uh doing all that stuff is more of a threat than like Wern themselves. Mm. So you you think although Wern's the leader, he's not really that powerful. It's more yeah. his people are. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I see. Yeah. I see. Uh, so kind of Har- agree. I kind of agree there. Mm, I see. I see. Do so you think it's more like the Gjorns and like the monasteries are powerful, mm. but Wern's mm-hmm. just like a figurehead almost? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so Harathan then thinks he sees a Durethi priest go into a nearby tent. But she's like, you're supposed to all be like in meditation together. I'm going to go scold this guy. He's not supposed to be out shopping right now. Uh, so he goes inside the tent, which smells of strong incense and like different soaps and stuff. Uh, and he takes off a gauntlet and touches uh, a, like a little tray of incense ash when a voice speaks behind him. Uh, the voice states that the ash is like the wreckage of Harathan's power. Harathan spins around, putting his gauntlet back on and sees Delaf. Harathan asks what Delef is doing here, but he doesn't respond at first. Delef then says that Harathan had, or has failed and that Telri makes a fool of him. He says that Harathan has failed and that his victory will be sweet in the face of Harathan's failure. Harathan asks what victory Delef has achieved. What victory do you think Delef has achieved? Oh, well, we know what happened. Okay, so wait. Say that one more time. We were talking about when... So, uh, so Harathan, Delef, Harathan and Delef are talking are talking yeah. and Delaf says that Harathan has failed and that that failure will be sweet in the face of his victory. Delaf's victory. Yeah. Well, I mean, I mean like Darkness said, we kind of already have a inkling of what happens, but uh like I definitely we've been thinking that he was after him in the whole this whole book. So I think he just he, he saw how, how he started he's starting to lose his you know power. Where he thought he had it, he thinks he's he's gonna win over him. Mm. But then, I mean, like I said, we get later, and there's a little different. But I was, I'm, I'm pretty, pretty sure that's what I was thinking before. I'm pretty sure you're gonna ask another question based upon what happens, and like, I will, be, yeah. Needed, right? yeah yep. So I'm just gonna wait for that. So, you, so okay, so you're yeah, okay, that's fine. Uh, so yeah, so then in the flickering lantern light, Harathan sees the zeal in Delaf's eyes and considers him to look like a uh, spore kiss sent to torment him. Delaf then walks out of the tent, Harathan quietly asks again, what victory? What victory? What victory? <laughs> uh, we then get chapter 52, another route in POV, and thus another Aeon, which is Aeon Shio, or Shio, meaning death, uh, which, I don't know if you can just use an Aeon to just, like, straight up kill people. <laughs> I have no idea. Yeah, if you, I would... if you could just straight up heal somebody, you could probably do the same in reverse. <laughs> I just... wonder if you could do, like, rapid fire death. <laughs> death to you, death to your family, death to your cow. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so we then you go. Probably to... put a bunch of modifiers on it. Yeah. 
a I bunch of modifiers, like, you die a certain way. It's like basically a death note. Aeon. Yeah, yeah it was, it's sort of like a death note thing, but instead of like, instead of like, uh, you know, writing stuff specifically, like if you look at the <laughs> at the Aeon that they write, you die. Oh, no, fun. it's just like little modifiers. It's like, okay, they're gonna die of this specific uh, illness and this specific organ, and it's gonna be at this specific time in this specific day. <laughs> That's what I imagine. Yeah. Um, but, yeah. but yeah, so we go back to Radon's point of view uh, as Galden stitches up a slice in his cheek. Radon says Karada would do it better, and Galden says uh, he mm-hmm. can wait until he sees her again then. <laughs> Did you say Mythic? I said, yeah. I, I thought that was funny. <laughs> And he's just like, he's like either I'm doing it or you wait. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and yeah, Radon's like, no, no, I can't wait. It just like keeps like breaking open more the more I smile and stuff. Uh, so Galen also notes that Radon was better at fighting than he had expected. And Radon explains that he had learned from Eandel when he had been trying to prove his father's law were foolish. Uh, and they are currently staying at Royal's place as he had seemed intrigued by his Kalu persona. Radon then at, uh, thinks about how the Aeons were unable to be destroyed by anyone but an Elantrian, even if what they had been drawn with was erased. And he kind of goes into a whole thing about, like, you know, if you draw something in dust and, like, the wind blows it away, it doesn't matter as long as it was completed. Um, but yeah, so Radon then asks Galadon how his Dula persona is. Uh, Galadon says he wouldn't have believed it, but that the others seemed to. Radon had apparently tried to do uh, a Dula in accent for Galadon before they had left, but even simple words had sent Galadon into gales of laughter. Which I don't even know if I can imagine Galadon laughing. <laughs> it would be interesting, that is for sure. Uh, however, some lesser-known Dula mares near the border of Erlon uh, spoke flawless Aeonic, so Radon had decided to just go with go with that <laughs> instead of trying to do an accent. Uh, he also notes that he had been trying to get Serene alone to tell her who he was. For once, he actually wants her to know who he is. <laughs> At least know that he's spirit. Yeah, say, yeah, such yeah. a change. <laughs> I don't think if he had gotten her alone, he would have told her he was routed. No, but, but he, for he once, he actually wants like, to tell her something. Spirit. Yeah, no, right. and <laughs> then change. later on, it's just like, hey, I'll tell you everything now. Uh, but yeah, she had refused though to speak to him, even refused a letter he had tried to give her. Uh, and Rowden thinks about how he wants to get into Royal and Serene's meetings. So, which apparently isn't that hard to do. Yeah, I know, right? So, because I don't think we really get an answer for this on your chapters, but why do you think Rowden wanted to get into these meetings so badly, even though he can communicate with Serene through Ash? Like, why not just be like, oh, here's some ideas to bring up at the meetings, instead of, like, going through all this? Well, because, I mean, you're having to go through a third party to get your ideas, and yeah, you better just put it there yourself. I figured that he would, he might as, like, he's making a new persona, he might as well, like, get, like, a better social standing with those that are having like, the same goal as him. It just puts him at a lot of risk, right, as an Elantrian. Sure. Uh, so Ra- <laughs> Sorry, I was just like, I, I, yeah. I, I respond the same way as uh, like, like mentally. Yeah. So I was like, mm-hmm. Sure. <laughs> uh, Radon then puts his illusion back on, and then uh, they, uh, Royal comes in. I think he like, knocks on the door or something. Uh, and apparently Radon had given Royal some gold lamp mounts for Royal to trade for him, which had earned him a decent amount of money. And then he does the whole thing like, oh, if I have this money, I guess I'll leave immediately. And he's like, no, no, stay. And he's like, oh, then I'll stay forever. Like, all this ridiculousness. <laughs> which is what, like, a stereotypical... Doolittle thing or something. I, I don't yeah. know if I could handle that. I don't I don't know if I'd be able to... <laughs> Don't do people from Doolittle. I'd be like, please, please stop. This is too much. I wish too, I was Dula Del. Too, God. too, too uh, extroverted. I couldn't deal with it. I would get tired so easily. I'd, I'd, be, I'd be so tired speaking to them. Uh, but yeah, so then Royal gives some sympathies for what Kalu must have gone through in Dula Del, uh, and then the conversation turns to what is happening in Aralon. Royal tells uh, Kalu that no one, not one refugee came through when Dula Del fell, and that Kalu is the only exception to this. Uh, Radon then says he needs to keep his secret of how he escaped, and then eventually he convinces Royal to bring him to the meeting that night. Because he doesn't have a secret. Yeah, he doesn't have a secret. Um, he, he technically does have experience, though, with sneaking out of places. Apparently. Because <laughs> he snuck, snuck out of Elantris, Elantris a few times. Uh, so yeah, were you surprised Royal let Radon into the meeting so easily? <laughs> Kinda, yeah. I thought it'd be a little harder than that. Right. <laughs> Although apparently he's been there for five days now. We did like a five-day time skip. I think they say at one point. I just, 
I don't know. I feel like Groudon gets his shit too easily. Yep, I agree. Everything just kind of comes to him so easily. Well, except for one thing. Later. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, even that is going to come up later, I'm sure, of it just being like, all right, he can now do it. <laughs> he said he's going to have a immense push. Uh, so Raiden then tells Galadon he knew he could pull it off as he knows Royal well. He explains that they need to get Royal on the throne. And then uh, he gets a cloth and puts some brown makeup on it, saying he hopes he won't have to use it. Uh, at the time of reading this chapter, did you have any ideas on what the brown makeup cloth could be for? No. I actually didn't even remember it was there until it happened. <laughs> Me. That's fine. Actually, I actually just was like, wait, where did that come from? When it does actually happen. <laughs> yeah, no, he actually does get a cloth and like put some brown makeup on. He does actually have a plan. <laughs> Backup plan. Uh, so yeah, then we go into chapter 53. Uh, and we skip to the meeting and Serenity's point of view as she is upset that Kalu was invited because she is like, we barely know this dude. Why is he here? I agree with her 100%. <laughs> uh, she says he could be a spy, but Kalu insists that he isn't. And Royal says that she technically had made uh, the same argument for her coming with the whole like fresh perspective from an outsider thing. He's like, I mean, we let you in for the exact same Ooh. reason I'm letting him in. <laughs> yeah, but she's pretty. <laughs> Uh, Ahan then arrives late, uh, and then they start speaking, all while Kin has snacks for them all on the table, because uh, of course he always has food for people. Uh, and... yep. awesome. Good host. Yep. Uh, so first Ahan suggests trying to get Talry to not convert to Shudareth, but Sereni says uh, he isn't stalling because he doesn't want to convert, but because he's waiting to see what he what all he can get from Warren. Royal then asks if they can get aid from Teod, but Sereni says that her father uh, has already converted, so that isn't happening, and also that they mostly only have a navy, not ground troops, so they don't really have... Even if he hadn't converted, it, w it wouldn't have really been much help in the first place. Um, and trying to... Be they also suggest trying to bring the common people into this, but that's also shot down as there wasn't enough time to train people. Ian Dell then suggests killing Tellery, which the nobles don't really disagree with at this point. They're kind of like, oh, we don't really have much other options. Um, so what did you think of their suggestions for dealing with Tellery? Did you... Uh, did you have any ideas? I think at the this killing point? was the good idea. I think the killing one was a great idea. Darkness. I thought it was a little too much. <laughs> <laughs> did you have any other ideas? Because like I think the but... whole killing thing was like kind of like last resort thing. So like we can't get the people. We can't take them off the throne easily at this point. I was I was, I was kind of hoping uh Rodin would like you know Show surprise up. surprise yeah. <laughs> well, that's his backup plan apparently. Yeah, um, but then, to be honest, I thought when, like, after, like, thinking about it a little bit more, after I, like, read through the, like, what is it, Andal's plan or whatever, mm. where he had, like, the stuff ready already, I was like, you know what, might as well. <laughs> you mean Royal? Royal's the one who has the assassins. Yeah, there you go, yeah. Mm -hmm. Which we'll get to. Uh, where was it? Yeah, so then Kalu suggests that if they uh, rally, not the common people, but to the nobility and guards to show them there is an alternative to Tellery, now that Royal and Sereni are no longer shamed, that there may be a chance to overthrow him after all. Because they're like, yeah, you're right. We can't like get the common people to revolt because there's not enough time to train them. But if all of the nobles go against Tellery, like, we can just mutiny him off the throne, basically. Yeah, but you know how hard it is to get like a bunch of people to do something specific? Right. Like... Uh, but, unless, yeah. <laughs> well, unless it's Rowden. <laughs> no, even, I don't even think for Rowden, like, because it took him forever to get I don't know, I guess it didn't really. Never mind. I was say it took him forever to get all these people together for his new launches, but it really didn't. It just kind of came to him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but also, like, technically with new launchers, like, they were way less hopeful. They had, like, way less going for them. Yeah, for uh, some Because, like, the, the whole just... thing is, like, he wasn't able to get all those other nobles on his side because, like, he's been working on this little group that Serene has been a part of for, like, years. Mm -hmm. And these are the only people that were able to, like, work with him out of all the nobles because like remember Talry okay. wouldn't work with him and like other nobles wouldn't work with him okay but the fact that everything that's been happening in like just the crown and just like how that city's working like the people even the nobles would be like worn down like incredible. yeah well i think that's what also what uh Rodin's basically saying here like i don't know <laughs> i agree that's exactly what Rodin's kind of saying that they're worn down and they they're more susceptible um, but yeah, so at this point, though, Sereni realizes who Kalu is and leaps up from her seat. Uh, and we get a very oh. brief paragraph in Rowden's perspective as he realizes that he had let go of his fake persona too quickly and Sereni had caught on to what even his best friends couldn't. 
Uh, and we go back to Serenity's. Well, mm-hmm. She figures out that he's spirit. <laughs> yeah. That he's right I mean, she catches on that he's a fake person, that she knows him. They technically yeah. also know him, just by a different yeah. name. Uh, so we then go back to Serenity's point of view, and she quickly calls for a break and hurries off. And uh, Kalu meets with her and can study. Uh, Spirit then explains how she had been right about the Aeons at the, and that they had needed the, the chasm line. He also uh-huh. says after she punches him in the side that it hadn't fixed the Elantrians, though. Uh, so were you happy that Serenity finally got to know that Kalu was Spirit? Yes. I'm yeah, happy. I was even more happy when he, she found out that he's uh, routed. Yeah. <laughs> Finally, so I was like, yeah, I was like, God damn! Just tell this woman that you, you are his her betrothed. Come on, <laughs> woman is about to marry some old dude, and you're like, Nah, I'm gonna let that shit happen. Uh, so Serenity then asks why he didn't tell her, and at first he jokes and says it was more fun this way, and then he says he had tried to tell her that he was Spear, but he couldn't get her alone. <laughs> and Serenity says he was too good of an actor, and she absolutely hated his fake personality, which causes Spirit to laugh and hug her. He then says that Erlon has been a mess since he left, which confuses Serene, which is his little hint about him being Rowden. Um, mm-hmm. Not because mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure he fucked up majorly there. Nah, I think, he, I think he actually meant to do it and give her the hint. But Yeah, because he, he says a little bit later, he's like, oh, I gave you a hint. She's like, yes, five minutes before or, like you revealed yourself. Yeah, exactly. I, I don't I don't think he meant it, though. You think he's just I like covering for himself? Like, oh, I mean, you technically yeah. got a hint. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Possibly, but... Uh. Um, but anyway, so there's a commotion in the main room, so Spirit uh, says he'll tell her later once they have more privacy. Uh, when they go back to the main room, Ahan had left, claiming something he ate hadn't agreed with him. Ken is okay. not happy with this, because he's like, how dare you insult my cooking? Yep. Mm-hmm. He's like, oh, my dang. food is never wrong. I think Serenity's like, I'm sure it was something he ate earlier in the day. It wasn't your cooking. Yeah. <laughs> uh, wait, totally no, not your cooking. A little bit, a little bit further down, right? I think it's at the end of this chapter, actually, so I'll just say there. Yeah. Uh, so we're all the states that they should continue on and admits he had gotten assassins to come to K. Uh, he had apparently felt guilty for reaching out to them, which is why he'd been so against bloodshed previously. Uh, so what do you think about the fact that Royal had hired assassins? <laughs> I was like, that's great. Like, yeah, give yeah, man, damn. Murdered somebody. You might as well do it Yeah, man, you're taking initiative. Damn. <laughs> uh, so then King Tellery and a group of guards arrive, followed by Ahan. Ahan happily says that he had finally got Royal, uh, and that he won't be able to joke about his shipments when he's in jail for the next few years. Royal okay, just let me mm-hmm. let me just pause you there real quick. Mm-hmm. So there was a moment there where they were like, "They're just crackers." Like, how did he get sick from it? Right. Well, no, I think Serenity says when uh when she leaves, Kin brings out like a proper like dish. Yeah. He like brings out like some like wraps or something. Actual food. Yeah. Yeah, and she's like, yeah. I told him not to make a full fucking meal. What the fuck? <laughs> yeah, but I, I mean, like, I don't know. That that moment when, uh, I forget his name, but, like, that one dude left, I was like, nah, y'all need to run. Oh, uh uh-huh, uh-huh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was like, no, it's it's, go- it's gonna go down right now. Like, just leave. <laughs> I, I, I did not trust that at all. Yeah, because Ahan and Royal had always had this this thing where they're like, oh, we're getting one over on each other, always bantering, no, we don't know if we're enemies or friends. Not even that. I, I felt it was like more self-interest. Mm-hmm. When I when I was like, oh, something's going to happen, I felt it was going to be more like self-interest based. But no, this dumbass, mm, he, Yeah, they also, they also make a hint at it before where they say, when she first comes back, where they're like, oh yeah, Ahan's been spending a lot of time in Tellery's palace trying to get their intel. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But this is what yeah. he was really doing. Be like, hey, Tellery. <laughs> I just I found it I found it insane when he's when he explains that he's also tried to do this with uh, Iodon. Iodon yeah, well, th- and that's like, Iodon little... would listen. I was like, yeah, Iodon's like, no, no, no. Royal's like one of my oh. closest friends. He would never betray me. We go way back. <laughs> I'm so upset though because like he's doing that shit as like if it were a game. Yeah, and it's yep. really not. Yeah, that's actually what it's actually what Royal says next because Royal just looks mournful and asks if Aha never realized when it stopped being a game because like they used to have like this game back and forth, but he's like, this has stopped being a game. Th- things are fucking serious. We're like going against the crown, dude. The fuck are you playing at? <laughs> Ahan, however, just says he had been trying for months to do this, but Iodon had never believed that Royal would betray him. So, you guys kind of already we've talked a little bit about the the thoughts on Ahan's betrayal. Because I kind of yeah, a little bit, but... an idiot. <sighs> uh-huh. Idiot. And so, 
Tellery then snaps his fingers and one of the guards shoves a sword through Royal's stomach. Ahan is horrified, saying Tellery... Die, Royal, die. (laughs) Ahan is horrified, saying Tellery had said the punishment would be prison. Ahan hurries over to kneel beside Royal. I think he's, like, crying Mm -hmm. or something, it says. Mm -hmm. Tellery then tells two of the soldiers to go find the assassins and throw them off the walls of Elantris. And he tells the other soldiers to kill the rest of the traitors, starting with Serene. Shudan, Iandel, and Lukal then form a protective barrier around Serene as the soldiers begin to move forward. And this reminded me a lot of uh, of Warbreaker with the priests. Mm-hmm. It was like, oh, hey, it's another Warbreaker moment. Ahan's the uh, blue fingers. Mm-hmm. Except he's not the like, brains ah, behind I will, it. I will, I will defend now. <laughs> yeah, so then Raudan calls out that the throne belonged to Idon's family, and Serene looks over at Raudan in awe as he throws the makeup-stained cloth onto the table, pretending he had just wiped off a disguise. Tellery is shocked, saying that he had been told Raudan was dead. And Tellery then flees with his guards hesitating before following him. What did you think about Rowden's reveal here? It was a reveal. Yep. I was like, I was more surprised that he actually was recognizable as Rowden. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. Like, damn, he just overnight, like a couple days, he's like, all right, now I figured it all out. Now I'm making myself look like myself. That was really weird to me. But... Well, yeah, I mean, it gets explained later that he has like a secondary illusion to make him look like himself. Yeah, but before when he first did the illusion or whatever, like he was u- using the illusionary magic there, he was like, it doesn't look anything like me. And like, then you just somehow figured out how to mold the aeons, I guess, to look more like you. What do you mean? Like, he, when he first changed, it, like when he was like, he read the book or whatever, and like the thing circled around him and he changed and he looked like, you know, he was no longer sick and uh, Galadon, right? Galadon. Mm. Uh, oh, I, th- I think he's kind of more commenting on, like, partially on the fact that, like, he's so used to his Elandrian self now. I don't know. Because they have, like, I, I mirrors and stuff it, now. I could have swore he said something, like, he doesn't I might have like missed how something. I did before. How I did before, and I was like, man, you just all of a sudden know? Like, you just knew how to manipulate it? He even states it later, I believe, when he's explaining his the way he did it. He's like, I had to uh, figure out how, like, I had to pretty much mold the aeons. I don't remember what his exact things were. Like, he had to use different modifiers to make it so that he could look like himself again. Mm. So it's like, you just know these? Like, kind of weird to me. I, don't know. I mean, he has been, like, non-stop practicing aeons. True, but also the fact that, like, okay, it's almost as if he was he's in a video game and he's just, like, in the character creation. He's like, I'll just bump up the nose a little bit, and then I'll bump up, <laughs> the, you know, like, no normal person knows how to do that. Like, I can't make myself look like some like me in a video game. I can't sit mm. there and like move the stuff in a video game to make myself look, you know, m- what I would look like IRL into a video game. Like, so yeah, like, that's the only I, way I can see it. I get what you're thinking. Like, you're, 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 you're thinking like, um, how does he know the specific ways to manipulate yeah. Aeon in order to make it look like him? Well, yeah, like, I, I do think it says though at one point that he used like. He was able to like get the Aeon to use like the base of like his actual oh, his, face. Yeah. So like it's it's only like basically like the illusion's using his face structure already. It's just changing like giving him hair, like a fake hair, and like changing his like skin color and stuff. So he doesn't look like he has a Lantrian skin. I don't know. I, 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 like I feel like if that was all that you had to change, like if you just had to give the person hair and like a better skin tone. She would have noticed that it was that spirit was routed for the moment, like they met, I don't know. or anybody for that matter would have like looked at him and been like, "That's routed," like you know, That's like true. the people who know what he looks like. A lot of people do recognize just like in general with like their uh, facial structure. Mm. Yeah, and like he he was like completely unrecognizable to people who supposedly should have recognized him. It's just it was weird to me as well. Yes, yeah, like I mean, I think. A lot of people have said as well, like, this is, like, and as we talked about before, like, this was one of Brandon's earlier works, so, like, mm-hmm. he's obviously not as, like, he gets better with, like, his better, writing skills course, over yeah. time. Everything everything gets better with age, of course. Yeah. yeah, so this, I mean, it was his first published work, and his, like, sixth book ever technically written. I think the first five never were published. Um, and I think he's released, like, parts of some of those old books, too, and, like, you read them, and yeah. you're like, damn, this book sucked. <laughs> I mean, hey, I I so. write I write too, and mm-hmm. like I could not write as good as he does yet. Mm-hmm. I have I still have to practice more and more to do it. Okay, yeah. like I, I'm, the nitpick that I'm getting is so 
finite. Yeah, that, and, and it, I think a lot it, of first book published. So yeah, and I think also one of your guys' nitpicks, which is a common one as well, is that Rowden sometimes seems a little too perfect. Yeah, like just, he's too good at stuff, and I think Brandon does a lot better in later books, um, with like character development and character imperfections a lot. Like I think everyone kind of takes like. Um, when was how far was Warbreaker into his like career? Warbreaker, I think, was published in twenty thirteen. He wrote he he did like an experiment with Warbreaker where he like published, the, which is why it's on his website for free, where he like published chapters as he wrote it or something. Like as he like well, the reason the reason so I, I think it was because, like, well because the, the reason I'm didn't... saying is just because I it came out the same time he wrote it. I don't actually know when Elantris was written, but it came out I think in two thousand nine. Yeah, and I think, but I don't know when it was written. Um, well, the, whereas the Warbreaker was written because, in 2013, yeah. I think. The reason I ask is because like uh, Vivenna or whatever, I feel like was much more developed as a character. Like yeah. you got to see her be this like snobby I know everything kind of person and then like get shot down immediately get put to like absolute shit and then like build herself back up and like you got a character development out of it where like here it's just like he was thrown into the depths of like the pit and he was just like nah I'm gonna you know be the best I'm gonna okay, just so, do whatever <laughs> yeah so I, I did just look it up so Lantris was published in 2005 Warbreaker was published in 2009, so four years later. Gotcha. Huh. And Mistborn, the first book of Mistborn, was published in 2006. So Mistborn is between Warbreaker and Elantris. Gotcha. Um, Where is, what is the other one called? The one that we're reading after Mistborn? Stormlight. Stormlight, yeah. Is that like his recent? Uh, Stormlight, I think, is his most recent series, but technically not his most recent book, because it's like, he obviously, like, it's... Of all mm -hmm. the... Yeah. Uh, uh, when was Way of Kings published? Way of Kings was published in 2010, so right after Warbreaker. So he did Warbreaker and then Stormlight. Gotcha. And I think Warbreaker, or not Warbreaker, sorry. I think Stormlight, most people consider to be his best, like, intricately written characters. Gotcha. Like, they have the most nuance to them, which also makes sense just because of how long Stormlight is. Like, there's more time to develop the characters. Because they're like his yeah. longest books, right? Yeah. And it's a series. Um, anyways, we went on a little bit of a tangent there. <laughs> yeah, just a little bit. Just a little bit. But, um, I mean, it's still about the book, so. Yeah. It is about the books in general. But yeah, so. It's, just, it's a nitpick that I have with this book specifically. Though. Yeah, and as I said, a lot of people have issues with Atlantis because it's early written. But again, I feel like it's still a good book overall. It's still one that I think it's important to read of his. And also, like, again, like, I think as you said, Mythic as well, like, although you're not enjoying this book as much, you'd prefer to read it now than later. Because, like, mm -hmm. you don't want to read too many, like, books that are written way later and then come back to this, I think. Yeah, I mean, I don't uh, feel like, I feel like this, and, and not, it's nothing against the way that you did it. I think we should have read yeah. this first because it's, I don't know, it's just, it, it would have, it, it would have been better. Ah, uh, maybe not, actually. Well, the thing not, is, though, maybe, I don't know if you would have been as interested in this book. It's a little too controversial. Yeah, I wasn't sure how you would I'm take it. <laughs> I don't know if you would have continued if you read a Ledger's first with how you're uh, taking I, it. I don't know. I feel like I would have, but that's yeah. just because I, I'm okay with Like, I would have, if if I was reading this without being on a podcast, yeah, I probably would have quit. I probably wouldn't have mm. read this one anywhere. I would have been like, all right, this is a little boring. Like, I would have made it a couple chapters in and been like, nah, I'm good. Also, and as I went I've to a different one. Yeah. As I've so. said before as well, my biggest reason for choosing Warbreaker first was because it was free online. Yeah. And so I was like, if we do this and you guys are like, nah, I'm out. I just don't enjoy the podcast format or I don't enjoy like his writing style or anything of that, you wouldn't really be any money out. Yeah. Um. So I, I, yeah, I, I preferred it that way. <laughs> I, I'd feel bad if like, oh, we went through this, you'd bought the book and everything. You're like, I hate the book. Like, like say like 20 chapters and you're like, I just despise this and don't want to do this. Right. So I had, that option. I had that option with this book. No, I'm just <laughs> <laughs> so for both you and Darkness, I was like, I think Warbreaker was a better start. Even though, as I said, podcast even... listeners, I'm being held hostage. <laughs> Which I mean, as I said, like even Warbreaker is a little controversial online, even though you two both loved it. So Warbreaker was also a bit of a controversial choice. Most people are like, start with Mistborn. Everyone says uh -huh. start with Mistborn, and I personally was like, if I started with Mistborn, I don't know if I would have continued with his books, because Mistborn's not my favorite, even though it seems to be the favorite of, like, 90% of his readers. <laughs> yeah. So, 
Okay, we can get off this tangent, though. <laughs> yes, off the tangent. <laughs> uh, where was I? Uh, oh, yeah, we're, we just... Rowden just did his reveal. So Rowden then goes to Royal, where Kin is trying to help, and Ahan is still kneeling and crying. Royal seems uh, happy to see Rowden back and says he should have sent the assassin straight away so that, I'm assuming, just like, this didn't happen. Uh, he then asks if Rowden had brought back Elantris uh, as Rowden had begun to draw a healing Aeon over him. However, the Aeon does little to heal Royal as Rowden doesn't know any modifiers or how to target a specific part of the body. Uh, so, had you been expecting Royal to suddenly die like this? What do you think of his no. death? <laughs> Did you I, cry, I Darkness? No, I was yawning. I'm sorry. Hmm? <laughs> uh, I mean, like, I didn't expect it, but I wasn't that bothered by it. You weren't no. bothered by Royal's death? Nah, I, oh. I, I expected death in general. Not his specifically. Mm. I still think oh. that Siri, I think I still think that Siri's gonna die. Serene? Oh yeah, for sure. Yep, Siri. <laughs> so you guys are I, unbothered, like, great. Just, yeah, I don't <laughs> know. But, I mean, well, I, 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 th- I don't think he went out like a bitch though. So it's not like he got stabbed and he was just like, I'm dying. Uh, he basically know, got stabbed in the back. His friend like betrayed yeah. him. He's like, oh shit, and then suddenly like stabbed out of nowhere. Yeah, I mean, but like he got stabbed. He sees, you know, uh, uh, Rowden. And he even gets a little bit of a talk and says, you know, hey, you know, here's, you know, he basically pretty much just like, you know, I really appreciate you and I'm glad I got to see you at the very end. And then yeah, that's he true. dies. He doesn't go out like a, you know, little whip. Yeah, he gets a really nice, they get a little nice talk here where he says that uh, Rowden says he basically raised him like a father because his own father was kind of garbage. Uh, and then and then he's like, if he wasn't for you, I would have been more like my father. And Royal's like, no, no, you were always like your mother. So apparently Rowden's mother was a like, great person why the fuck she married Iodon? who knows uh <laughs> i mean she didn't seem like a very good person so you've never met her yeah <laughs> she didn't seem like a very good person <laughs> you've never met her she died like way long ah. ago ah. yeah she can't be a good person if she died i mean come on. you're right <laughs> damn that's um, what i was good no, people don't die <laughs> only the bad people uh-huh like royal like like Saolin, right, Dark Dose? Yeah, Only bad like him. Die? Exactly. You, you just Bad-Dose. had to bring him up. <laughs> you I were was guys... <laughs> forgetting and blocking that memory out. You were you were forgetting your boyfriend? Oh my God. <laughs> uh, so Raiden then finally stands, and the nobles fall to their knees as Eendel says, "My king." And Serene realizes this is her husband. She, she suddenly goes over, gets over the super of like, "Oh shit, this is Spirit's Raiden." And then she's like, "Oh shit, I'm actually married to this man." <laughs> Uh, no, you're not. Yeah, I know. She's technically not, but she's she's been calling him uh, uh, and her husband this lo- whole time. I love, I love that that like little part of the scene later when he's yeah, like, we'll get to it later, technically but... we're not actually married. And she's, and she just like, like looks at him like, "Are you breaking this off?" <laughs> yeah, I was like, "Yeah, damn." He needs to go. He's gonna go with what's what's the what was her name? God damn it! Uh, no, the woman that's in a new Elantra right now. Oh, Karata. Yeah, I was like, oh, he's gonna go with Karata. <laughs> <laughs> um, but are you so, guys happy that Serene is finally aware of Spirit being routed? Yes. No. I should have said no. it long ago. Yes, I agree with that part. Yeah. <laughs> they're fucking fine. She finally fucking knows they're after fu- so wait, long. They're fucking finally? <laughs> <laughs> is that what I meant? That's not what I meant. <laughs> I mean, uh, we don't even know if that would work since he's a laundry and then I'm you know. Anyways, chapter 54, to, let's, move on. First. let's move on. <laughs> chapter 54, we get Harathan's point of view as he learns of Royal's death and the reason behind it, as well as Rowden's return. Harathan instantly thinks that Serene has found a lookalike of Rowden and is using Rowden's reputation to take the throne back from Tellery. Which, honestly, why was that never an option they brought up? That sounded like hey. a good plan. <laughs> that sounded like a great plan. <laughs> Harathan thinks of the best plans here, apparently. I um, mean... He obviously didn't see one thing coming, so... Yeah. Uh, he, however, is nervous about how Royal's death will make the other nobles feel, because he's like, things are already like on shaky ground here, I don't know about this. Uh, we then skip to later in the day when Harathan is trying to get a meeting with Tellery, who is apparently seeing no one. Harathan asks the guard again to go ask Tellery to see him, which the guard does with a sigh. When the guard returns, though, it isn't the same guard. The fake guard attacks the other guard, and Harathan curses that this is the one night he left his armor behind, which... Why? He never why? he never doesn't leave his yeah, armor. Why? <laughs> why did you not have your armor? Like right. what? Uh, Maybe he was about to present himself to the king. 
and convince him. You know? Oh, really? Present himself? He was just going to take it off, strip it all off, and be like, this yeah. is me, bear. Yep. Asking for you Anyways, he hurries, he hurries into the room and sees the city guards fighting with Eendel's guards while a bunch of these fancy yeah, we... cloths burn around the room. Uh, which, fuck your luxurious tapestries and everything, I guess. Uh-huh. Uh, I just love I just love the the descriptive of uh, how he dies. He searches for Tellery and sees him trying to flee through a back door when Eendel beheads him. I think his head rolls to like Harathan's feet. Yep, I was like, oh, love mm-hmm. it. Eendel, love the detail. <laughs> yeah, Eendel then collapses while holding a wound to his side. Uh, Harathan stares down at the two corpses and with resignation thinks he can no longer avoid a bloody change in power. So, uh, Which I said already. Do you think any more of the nobles will die now that we've had two of the main All noble group, Royal and Eendel, die? All of them are going to die. Do so you think, uh... Oh, wait, wait, wait. Should... Pause mm-hmm. real quick. Um, mm-hmm. Who was it that had the, uh... That Seon? Uh, the Royal. Royal had the Seon in the garden. Okay. <laughs> Doctor's is making notes like, Ooh. <laughs> Yeah, we're waiting, for, we're waiting for Royal to come back into the launch Yeah, mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Uh, so that was the end of part two. We are now on part three, The Spirit of Elantris. I will, which... I will say, when it said in my audiobook part three, I was like, oh shit, I, don't, I can't go any further. And I was like, wait, <laughs> we're, not, we're, not <laughs> we're not as many chapters in as I thought we were. Yeah, I had to double check. I was like, did I pass yep. over? Yeah, I was like, oh, part three. Oh, okay, maybe we'd stop here. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, and so, of course, for the part three, The Spirit of Elantris, we get the... Aeon for spirit, which is Rao. Wow. I thought we had that already. I told you guys about it last time that we were going to get into part three and that we were going to see Aeon Rao, meaning spirit of land. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I kind of explained the name of the part three last time to you guys. I was like, oh, we're going to go into part three. This is the name of it. Okay. Uh, so, yeah. So, we then, at the ch- start of chapter 55, also get a new Aeon, Aeon Ne, meaning sight and clarity. Yes. Uh, we then go back to Rowden's point of view as he and Serene stare at Elantris from the top of Kin's castle like home uh, as it sits on top of a hill. Uh, since Royal died the night before, Kin had barricaded them in and said he'd had he has enough supplies to last for years. He's like, okay, this is our fortress now. <laughs> no one's leaving. Uh, Serenia. Yeah, fine, funny. Yeah, <laughs> Serenia says that she should have realized that Spirit and Rowden were the same person. She had always mm-hmm. been suspicious of Rowden's death, after all. She also says she can't believe he didn't tell her. He then says he gave her a clue, which she retorts was only five minutes before he revealed himself. Uh, Rowden then admits. I mean, technically, he also gave her another clue before that, but <laughs> she just didn't seem to notice that one. <laughs> Rather than admits that they aren't really married because he isn't dead, and that they should formally get married finally. After she like kind of shoots him a look, and he's like, "No, no, I don't. I don't mean that. I don't want to get married to you. I mean that we should actually get married." Um, and Serenity agrees that after two engagements and only two months, she deserves a wedding. Uh, so my question is, do you think Serenity and Rowden will actually be able to get married, or no. do you think something's going to no. happen? <laughs> well, well, I think they're going to get I married. Think... I just don't think I think there's something going to happen beforehand. You know what? We have the exact same fucking theory. There's yeah. no fucking way. Yeah, I mean, I technically their I, wedding clause 100%. is still if one of them dies. They're still married, so technically they could be married if she dies. Well, yeah, I definitely think she's gonna die, and then he's gonna just be, like, distraught and then, like, open the door and heal her wounds and possibly heal himself in the same process. Mm. And become an actual true Elantrian. What were you gonna say there, Darkness? I, I didn't say anything. I don't oh, think. okay. I thought... Uh, earlier. Just Art, Art totally says stuff, he just doesn't want to say it now. <laughs> right. Uh, they then speak about Royal for a bit, Serenity saying Kin had, hadn't been sure at first why Royal was helping them. Radon states that many people took Royal's craftiness for deceitfulness. They then also discuss how Serenity and Royal almost got married and how crazy it was even though Serenity would have gone through with it. Uh, they next talk about new Elantris for a bit, which Rowden says basically runs itself. He also says uh, he's having the Elantrians learn the Aeons, so they have a chance to defend themselves if something happens. He also feels guilty for not knowing the healing Aeon modifiers well enough, as he feels he likely had enough time to save Royal if he had known the modifiers to do it. Uh, do you think the Elantrians will have to defend themselves? Uh, yeah. And do you think the even the, the, weak, the fact that the Aeons are weakened will even be able to help? So, like, if they're, like, attacked or something, will they even be able to defend themselves, even if they know Aeons? Uh, I definitely think they're going to have to defend themselves, kind of with what we just got in the very last chapter. But mm-hmm. um, I think, I don't know if they're going to do as well. I think that's kind of the whole tipping point thing that I was talking about, where mm. uh, Rowden's going to become a true Elantrian. 
Uh, so Rowden then uses an Aeon to rego Serene's hair for her, which she tearfully thanks him which for. Which is awesome. Which is so awesome. She gets her magical hair, just like Siri. <laughs> oh, my God. Just like, just like Tangled. Yeah. Uh, she then asks him Good to boy. show her his uh, his face as she's getting too used to the illusion. He hesitantly does so, and she says that it isn't as bad as everyone else says. She then notices the cut on his cheek and realizes she had done that to him. She, uh, he also explains that the night before, he'd had two illusions on, one on his undershirt for his Rowden face, and one on the top layer of clothing for Kalu. Uh, and eventually they notice something at the palace, and Rowden draws Aeon uh, Nay to create a magnified view of the city and zooms in on the palace. Awesome. Telescope. <laughs> he sees that soldiers are laying corpses on sheets, and then Serenity gasps in shock as they recognize Eondel and Telri's corpses. And then our last chapter, which is Serenity's point of view. I'm surprised they recognize uh, Telri. I mean, his head wasn't damaged, it was just, it was just like, decapitated. <laughs> yep, yeah, one fell swoop. Uh, so, uh, Serene is comforting Shudin, who, uh, whose almost father-in-law had been a traitor to their group, because, uh, that was Terena's dad, and Terena uh -huh. has gone missing, uh, and his best oh. friend, which is Iandel, uh, I wasn't sure if you guys remembered his best friend's Iandel, uh, is now dead, uh, and Rowden says Iandel had been foolish for going after Telri like that and getting himself killed. Uh, do you agree with Rowden that it was stupid for Ian? Ian Dell to have gone no. to assassinate Tari? No, he didn't. I don't know. No. Yeah. He finished the job even if he did die in the process. Uh, so once the funeral pyres are done burning, a group of 50 guards come towards Kin's home. Kin suggests collapsing his doorway, which apparently he could just collapse his fucking doorway with a bunch of, I think, rocks or something, he says. Mm -hmm. uh, which Rowden denies and says he wants to meet with the guards. Kin states that he does what Rowden asks only because he trusts him as he accepts the rule of no man, which shocks Serene. Uh, did you have any thoughts on Kin's little statement there? No, not really. I mean, wait, is that, is this, this is, uh, that's her, her dad's brother, right? Yes. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Her dad's that brother, would, and he's like, would, I accept that, the rule of no would, man. That would explain a lot on why he's banished. Do you have any thoughts, Darkness? Mm, not really. I kind of just, like, skimmed over Thumbed it. it out. <laughs> yeah, it I, out. I thought you guys might skim over that, which is why I was like, ooh, any thoughts? Because you guys had kind of wondered about their relationship, brothers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm still wondering why they why a brother would uh, cast his brother out. Uh, the guards Maybe. arrive. Hmm? Never mind. Not continue. Okay. What was that, darkness? No, continue. Darkness. What was that? Nothing. Okay. Uh, the guards arrive and both Rowden and Kin relax as they tell Rowden they are in need of a king to prevent Harathan from doing anything. Rowden states that he wants his coronation to happen within the hour. Uh, we then skip to Rowden entering the palace throne room. Sainalan is there to crown Rowden to show his support of Shukarath. Serene is also there by the throne, and a crowd of nobility are watching. Rowden begins his speech to the crowd, but suddenly feels someone manipulating the door. He glances around the room until his eyes fall on a blonde Dorethi priest. Suddenly some people faint, and Rowden knew his illusion had fallen. Sainalan drops the crown when he sees Rowden as well. So, how do you think the priest, who we, we learn in this chapter is Delaf, was able to manip manipulate the door? Because he is also a Lantrian. He's also an Elantrian, even though he hates the Elantrians so much. I don't think he actually hates them. I'm pretty sure I said that he. I that yep. that was you did. Yeah. You did. I know. I, I remember. I remember driving home and hearing this and going, "Oh, that is totally what Darkness said." <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "Shit, Darkness was right." Yeah, I know. I, right. Yeah, I know, right? Uh, but yeah, I mean. When Darkness made the comment before, I was like, I feel, I felt like the uh, whole I hate Elantris was like a show of some sort. But mm. uh, so Serenity then speaks. Like mm -hmm. I feel like there's a reason, though. Like, also, maybe they cast him out. Yeah. Also, um, I don't know if he was blonde. I don't think I paid attention to it. Yeah. I don't right. think it's been mentioned either. since like the very beginning of the book. Yeah. He, he's apparently blonde. Ugh. He, anyway. he looks like he's in his twenties, but he's actually quite wait, a bit older. They is, say. Wait, is he blonde with blue eyes? Oh no! I think so. <gasps> Why? Master race. It's the master race. <laughs> Vinhail, um, Vinhail. Oh gosh. Uh, so Serene then speaks, making a speech and ending. Uh, Serene then speaks, making a speech. Uh, that just sounds weird to me. Wow. <laughs> and ending it with the crowd, uh, asking the crowd if an Elantrian can be any worse than Iodon or Telri were as king. Yes. Yes, they can. <laughs> she then says she accepts Rowden as her king. Her friends kneel. Uh, his friends kneel as well, and then like a wave, the rest of the room does the same. So Renee then crowns Rowden, and some people cheer. Are you surprised mm -hmm. that people accepted an Elantrian Rowden as their king? I was looking after all of the, 
after all of what happened? Not at all. No, nah, I was looking pissed off because here we go. Another thing he gets, right? Oh, yeah, well, yeah, but I mean, and I wasn't not, surprised. Not, not only that, but like, the fuck they gonna do if he becomes a hoe? <laughs> I mean, he already is a hoe. That's true. Oh, oh wait, we're talking about hoe ed. Never mind. Yes. <laughs> Uh, so we then switch to Serenity's point of view, which she knows is D-Love hissing. <laughs> I just imagine him going, <laughs> Right? Me too! <laughs> like it's like a cat. cat. <laughs> we, we, got, we got snakes in here. <laughs> He's hissing and looks like he wanted to tear Rowden apart. d then quickly leaves the room, and Serenity turns back to Rowden. Rowden is shocked that the people accepted him, knowing he was an Elantrian, and Serenity states that the people have learned to accept a king who can lead them, not just one that has money or power. Rowden then tells Serenity that d was the one causing his illusion to drop, he asks for Ash and tells him to go to Galadon and be ready for something, and that he is worried. Mm-hmm. And that is the end of our chapters. Uh, how my really only question for the overview is, how do you think this book is going to end? Uh, everybody yeah. dies. Yep. Mm-hmm. That's it. <laughs> Rowden stands on top of a pile of bodies. Uh, somehow brings back Elantris to its former glory. I think. Okay, I think. Uh, what's her name? Stranades. I, I think Serena's gonna die. I do too. Mm. I think Rowden's gonna get that push that he needs, like Mythic thinks. Yeah. Well, I guys... don't think he's gonna kill her. So if you guys think everyone's gonna, like, a bunch of people are gonna die, should we, should we just go through the main characters? Is Rowden gonna die? What's gonna happen with Rowden? No, I think Rowden's no, gonna be the only one to survive. Yeah, he's gonna become a Super Saiyan. Okay. Super you guys think Serena's gonna die? Yes. Yes, and but I think possibly she's gonna be brought back. back. Yeah. Okay. No, you guys I think she's gonna become brought back. I don't think she's gonna be killed though. I think she's gonna be come back. She's gonna come back like a, a Yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh, possibly. She loves it so much. Mm-hmm. Uh, Harathan is Harathan gonna die? I hope so. <laughs> uh, I think he's gonna kill himself. No. Oh, really? Honestly, honestly, twist out twist here. I think he's going to actually realize that he needs to like be a good guy for once. He's going to go down. He's gonna go down like one last hurrah, but being on the good the side of good this time. Mm. Uh, I I think it's gonna. Be, I think he's going. I think still Diloph is gonna be his downfall. Uh, I think so too. I think Diloph and him are gonna have like a battle speak, or something. So speaking of Diloph, do you think Diloph is gonna live or die? Yes, die. I don't oh. think he's gonna die. He knows how to manipulate Burn him. the story. Burn him. Uh, who else is the main character? Uh, Shuden. The guy that Serenity was comforting, uh, the Jindonese guy. Do you think Shuden's going to live or die? One of the nobles. Uh, I don't care. Let Let's him see. die. <laughs> All right. How about Kin, her uncle? Is he going to live or die? Nah, he's going to live. I think he needs to make up with his dad. With his, or not with his dad. With her dad. <laughs> he's the one that brother. cooks. Right? Or my yeah, kid. he's the one that cooks. He's the one. Oh yeah, I need him as a housewife. So. He's live. <laughs> what about Kin's family? He's got. He's got his. I hope they all live. I hope they all live. Those kids. Man, fuck those kids. They got the kids and the and his and his wife. I like the wife. wife. Out of all of them, I, I like the I wife the most. I hope I hope they all live because I like those kids. You don't you don't like the the poor guy who just he counts numbers and he's like got no. some issues. Poor kid. Um. All right. Uh. Who else is there who's still alive? Uh. We have uh Galadon. Do you think Galadon's gonna live or die? No. If he dies, I'm gonna be so sad. No, he has to live. He has to live. Yeah, he's going to live. He'll be fine. Nah, yeah. he's going to die. Mm. Uh, Karada. Is Karada going to live or die? Oh, she's dead. <laughs> okay. No, that's his love. That's Rowden's love interest. Nah, she's got to stay alive. <laughs> uh, who else is <gasps> there? I take it back. That dude is going to die. Uh, do I... get... There you go. He's going to get back into that pool. He's not going to uh... die. He's going to become hot. <gasps> what? Whoa. What if? What if they take... Uh, what's the guy? What was that priest? The other priest name? The blonde haired one? God damn. Saint Alan? The one that was the evil. The oh, evil the evil Dilaf? Dilaf, yeah. What if they take Dilaf to, and they throw him in that pool? That's what I was thinking. Yeah. That water of death. Mm. Uh, what? Well, I still want to know what happens if you throw a normal ass person in there. Don't probably know. nothing. It's probably just water to them. Um, Maybe we'll find I out. Think, I think those are all kind of the main people that I can think of. I think Iodon's going to die. Uh, I don't know. Not a, so. Oh, what about what about uh, Iodon's wife and like the other women fencers, like Eshin and oh, women fencers? Nah, uh, nah. They they gotta create gonna... the revolution. Yeah, they're gonna become the council. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I think that is everyone. So yeah. So are you guys looking forward? We're gonna be reading yeah chapters fifty-seven through the epilogue, and then as you guys said you wanted me to do, I'm going to live read the uh, postscript. So do not read the postscript. Yeah, we get. 
Yay, we get to hear Midnight read yeah. and, and pronounce words wrong. Uh, and I'm, I, don't think, I don't think we'll bother with the Mad King. What we can do after next episode, if you guys want to read huh. the deleted scenes, you can if you want to. And if you guys do read them and enjoy them, we can maybe do like a little side episode sometime about the Mad King chapters but uh i don't think we'll include them we just won't have Wait, time next time there's a book about Je there's a book about jesus <laughs> remember it's the it's the it's rowden's crazy brother that was cut out of the book yeah jesus <laughs> um but yeah so we're gonna yeah do all the way through the epilogue and then you guys stop and i will do the postscript as i said and we will Sounds also good. technically in a separate episode for all of the listeners but at the same time for all of us, we're also going to be doing the Mistborn trailer, which will be the Mistborn prologue and back of the Mistborn book. Sounds good. Yeah. So thank you guys all so much for watching and listening. We really appreciate it. And have a good day. Bye. Bye. Bye.